But the point is you get happy because the dog is once again on his feet, walking around, wagging its tail, whatever, and it's gone. So if Jannah and paradise was achieved by, if Jannah and paradise was achieved by the quenching of the thirst of the dog, what if something more dedicated is provided for that dog? Don't you think there's a greater chance of getting Jannah? Common sense. Subhanallah. We ask Allah to open our doors. So let's be hopeful. Let's try. Let's use our field to reach out to people. Let's become better. And let's remember that sometimes because of our haughtiness and arrogance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that it's best for us not to get exactly what we want. And it brings me to one very interesting point. None of us, not a single one of us, will have everything we want on earth every time. No, not one. Because we were not sent to the earth in order to have whatever we want. There's a special place known as paradise where that will come. If we had whatever we wanted on earth, what was the point of going to a place called heaven? Where Allah says, you get whatever you want. You say, well, I've already got whatever I want. There was no point. So Allah says, you coming here, we will just test you. Because if you watch carefully, some of you will pass away early. Some pass away a little bit later. Some live a long, long life and then they pass away. Everyone passes away. Where are they going? Why is it that they were here so short? They're going somewhere. I was talking a few days ago to someone, a non-Muslim, and they were speaking about death and how it is. And I said, you know what? I believe that when we die and we see what we get later on, we're going to tell ourselves, hey, I wasted too many years back there. It was such a dump. Back there meaning back where? Here. Sorry for calling this place a dump. <laughs> but to be honest, you wouldn't know. You have to have belief. You're going to a better place. You're a mu'min. You've believed in Allah. If he could give this to me, then definitely he's got something far better in store for me. If he's told me that, I believe it. Really. And so when I go there, I will be so delighted. Stop fearing so much that you get depressed. I am getting old. I might die. I might die. You not, you might die. You will die. <laughs> and we're not saying that in a dooming way. We're saying it in a reality hitting way. Subhanallah to say, look, just prepare. Just praise Allah. Wherever you faulted, ask Allah's forgiveness. Get back on the track and walk again in the right direction. Allah didn't say you won't falter. He knows your nature. He knows you personally. He knows your struggles. He hears you. He has a link with you. Remember this. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He made people feel the love of Allah. He made people feel the connection with Allah. Because he was connected with them and he made the people feel that he was one of them. Although he was far superior in the sense that he was the messenger of Allah, the most noble of all prophets, the highest of all creation. But not once did he say, you know what? I'm better than all you guys here. No, the hadith says the prophet وسلم, when he sat with people, he sat like he was one of them. Amazing. He sat like he was one of them. He treated everyone with utmost respect. How many of us can do that to the others? I tell you one difficulty that we have in this ummah at the moment. We don't greet each other. No greeting whatsoever. No salam. Unless you know the person or you want something from them or perhaps they're wealthy or authority or popular or whatever else. Otherwise, there's no greeting. No, we have these faces that are all screwed up, literally. You know, astaghfirullah. And what happens? You look at the other person, you look away and you're gone. But you're a Muslim, you're a Muslim. Learn to greet. I tell you, I've seen non-Muslims do better than us. Wallahi, I'm not joking. Good morning, sir. They will tell you as they pass in. Morning, ma'am. Good afternoon. They'll tell you, hi, how are you doing? Fine. You hear all these words, subhanAllah, coming from whom? Non-Muslims. They greet you. But you're a Muslim, you can't greet a fellow Muslim. You can't even greet others, no one. I'm just there, I'm my own person, dry, cold, that's it. It's me. Do you know that by greeting someone, you're actually engaging in a huge act of worship. You're achieving closeness to your maker because you share the same creator. Why do we call ourselves brothers and sisters? Because firstly, it's in humanity. We have the same creator. We have the same forefathers. 